Good morning, Chalupa. What's that you have for me there today? Let's see what this is. This is a CMB Predator. I guess you're a small predator. You're a cat. Is this what we're reviewing today? Yeah? All right, this is what we're doing. Here we go. This is the CMB Predator. This is the 14C28N version. I'm going to do my new format with this knife. It's going to be how the knife looks, how the knife feels, and how the knife works. But I'll tell you right off the bat, this knife is designed to work hard and it works amazingly well. So let's start off with how it looks. This looks better than you would expect for the $60 to $70 range. The micarta has some nice texturing visible to it. Uh, the blade lines, the, the grinds and stuff are nice and clean. There's a little bit of where you can see from me using it on the on the coating of the blade but it, it's held up okay uh, edges are nice and rounded it looks very smooth so nothing nothing wrong with the way this knife looks this fall off here around the choil looks a little odd to me uh, but it's definitely not a deal breaker given everything else that's going on with this knife relatively standard pocket clip good spacing there in the pocket clip uh, g10 backspacer you know, not not beautiful by any means, but again, better than you would expect for, for 60 bucks or so. I'll give a shot of how it looks in the pocket so you can see what that looks like. It comes in and out of the pocket nice and cleanly. Nothing to complain about there. How does this knife feel? Well, given the profile that's a little bit odd, you would expect this knife to feel awkward, but as soon as I grab this knife, I could tell this was a knife that was designed to feel good in the hand and not necessarily one that was designed around how it looks. This big double finger choil up here gives you a really, really good grip. Uh, it keeps you from sliding up or down on the knife so that when you're working hard with it, it won't slide around. And the depth that you have in the handle back here is very good at keeping the knife from twisting in your hand. This is a a locked in grip that's wonderful because this is again obviously a work knife so you're going to be doing a lot of pushing and pulling on this knife. Uh, the feel of the action is just wonderful. It's on bearings, they're very smooth. Even with the axis bar doing its thing, I can thumb flick this very easily. I can finger and spidey flick this very easily. If I axis flip it, it just slides out. And of course, it falls closed. Extremely fidgetable knife and just a wonderful, wonderful feel to it. I haven't felt too many knives that are smoother than this at any price point. Again, that's really cool given that this knife is only 70 bucks uh, or 60 bucks right now. It was 70 bucks when I bought it. Uh, feel is good because these are rounded off. There's a little bit of an edge to the inside here where they haven't rounded the inside of the liners but it doesn't bother me as much as some knives I've had. It, it seems to fit my hand very well. There's no jimping on the spine, but again, this is such a grippy micarta handle and such a good finger toil there that I don't feel like I need it. It doesn't bother me that that's not there. I have so much grip on the rest of this knife that it's not gonna come out of my hand. So good feel, decent looks, even though the profile is kind of odd. We'll get into why that is in, in, a, in a minute. How does this knife work? Well, I've already kind of started telling you that it works really well. Edge holding on this was spectacular. 450 cuts and this was still very sharp. I didn't take this edge to failure in my testing because it was so good. And once I get over 400 or so, I usually don't because that's, that's amazing edge holding. Uh, cutting on a flat surface is quite good. There's enough belly in that blade to get the job done. Cutting rope is, is quite good. There's enough straightness there and there's enough finger choil so that your hand kind of naturally rotates to get through the rope. No issues with either of those. There is this large kind of step off to the blade here. Uh, the reason why that is there is because of the placement of the axis lock. So when the knife closes, that piece right there is where the axis lock sits down into the blade where you can see there. So there has to be that step off. 
I would rather them have brought it out pretty much straight and then brought the handle up to that so you didn't have this big gap here because you can catch a rope in there. It doesn't happen often, but it's it's an issue. Um, again, enough control of the knife is not a huge issue, but if you're cutting rope all the time, that might not be 100% what you want. Uh, some good sturdiness features they've given it. You can see how much they have pocketed that place where it goes over the stop pin. Very sturdy connection there to the stop pin. Uh, decent blade thickness. They've left a decent tip to it. It doesn't get too thin, uh, even though the grind lines are pretty high, so it's a very slicey blade. Just excellent performance on this. It is a full steel liner, so we'll weigh it and we'll get some specs on it. Weight on this knife is... 4.8 ounces, so given the fact that the blade isn't that long, that is a bit on the heavy side, but it's full steel liners, so the weight is kind of a consequence of the sturdy construction. There it is next to a Microtech Ultratech clone, so fairly standard size knife. There it is next to a Rake P108, forgot what model that was. And here it is next to a Bug Out. So it's a bigger, sturdier knife than the bug out. Straighter edge, but not a whole lot more cutting surface. Uh, but this feels like a much larger, sturdier knife in your hand. The, the picture doesn't give you any sense of how much better this feels in your hand uh, than something like this. This is something you could work with all day. And I have, uh, and it didn't bug me at all. Whereas the bug out is definitely a lightweight EDC that you wouldn't want to do a whole lot of actual work with. Uh, thoughts uh, and recommendations on this knife? This is absolutely excellent, especially at the price that it is. Uh, if the disassembly is okay, which I am going to do next, I will do this on this video, I'm giving my recommendations first just for, for conciseness sake. Uh, I would highly recommend this knife. This is one that I actually kept for my own personal collection. I will say that you should definitely find the 14C28N version of this knife and not uh, the D2 version. 14C28N version has great corrosion resistance as well as great edge retention. The D2 would probably hold an edge decently, but it's not going to hold the, it's not going to resist corrosion anything like the 14C28N. So when you're carrying this around in your pocket, you know, sweating, working, all that stuff, this is going to stay sharper in your pocket for weeks longer than a D2 blade would. So definitely get that version. Uh, but otherwise, super solid knife. Let's go ahead and take it apart. So I've got the pocket clip off and I made an interesting discovery about this knife. So when you're disassembling it, you can take just half of this knife off because CMB has improved upon the axis design uh, and they've made a bolt head on the axis bar. So what that means is once I get the pivot bolt out, once I get the pocket clip off, once I get that uh, structural standoff bolt on or off, I can pop off the side plate. I can pop off that one spring and then what I can do is unscrew this. So this little piece on the end of the axis bar unscrews. And then I can pop the whole thing apart. And I don't have to disassemble this entire side of the knife unless I want to. So if all I want to do is take the bearings out, service the bearings, service the blade, pop the blade off, that sort of thing, I don't have to take apart this entire other half of the knife to do it, uh, which makes my life a whole lot easier. So that's a great thing about the disassembly on this particular knife. I'll show you the other half of it in a minute, uh, but I'll tell you I have a lot of trouble with getting these off. So that is a cool feature of this knife. So I'm going in now with pliers that have teeth on them to try to get a better grip on that barrel nut. I'm hoping that I don't deform it to the point where it won't go back in. to the backspace here. And it is still just spinning away in those pliers.
Okay, I was able to grip it extremely tightly and then get the bolt out. Now I'm going to try the second one. Thankfully, those standoffs appear to be made from steel rather than aluminum. If they were made from aluminum, you would never get them out because they would just crush under the amount of force that I am using to clamp them tightly enough to get them off. So now I have the other scale off. Now I can remove the other Omega spring. Now I can finally remove the axis lock bar, which is covered in fuzz. Let's clean that off. And now I can show you stop pin, which is the only thing left holding this together. And it's in there tight. There we go. Stop pin is a little small. Blade sits around it here, so the hole in the blade is slightly bigger than the stop pin. Uh, there it is, little guy. I like the fact that they have recessed the bearings into just the liners, which means that they've left full thickness of the tang on the blade there. Otherwise, that's a little on the thin side. I'd like to see a bit more metal on the back here. I don't think it would ever be a problem. Uh, but at least they haven't skeletonized that. I, if they skeletonized this, it would definitely be a problem. Now, this is a very similar knife to the Beth's Techman Ronin. These knives are direct competitors, right? Similar size, similar shape, same blade steel, similar idea behind the two. This is a much better knife. This is lighter, uh, slightly different blade profile, more slender, but this holds an edge far better uh, and it, it's smoother in operation and the lock has better lock up on this one. No issues with this one. I had some issues with this one. Uh, so two knives, very similar. Definitely go for this one instead of that particular competitor.